the whole theme of of this is don't wait till January, right? And so as people are closing in on the end of the year, and whether you've had a good year, a great year, or a miserable year, it's a good point to just sort of reflect on what's happened and really prepare yourself for next year. You know, I think waiting until January, you're already behind the eight ball because institutions will start putting capital to work with whatever their views are. Um, so what what are your views? This is sort of my cyclical view is heading into January and, and all of 2023 is the cyclical areas of the market could be as especially vulnerable to, to downside. Um, because if the, the, one this thing I think to my ears having bought, uh, having bought quality <laughs> growth. So yeah, please keep going. <laughs> well, I, so I think what a lot of people miss when looking at relative performance is that you also have to look at the absolute price charts, right? So, you know, an absolute price or a relative price chart can be up into the right, like values outperforming growth, but that could be a function of growth just falling faster than value doesn't mean value is going up and in the case of 2000 2001 so the the dot-com bust was value outperforming growth yes it was according to the category or was yep. it the case that tech growth was simply underperforming everything else given its weighting well i'm glad you mentioned the 2000 because again i like to use that analogy given everything that's going on and you know, there was there was a component to that cycle, right? Especially 2000, where growth was falling and value was holding up, even rising. You know, you look at some of the oil names. I know, like Exxon Mobil. Yes, they were going up while tech was was collapsing. There was, you know, in terms of that relative performance, that was both uh, of those aspects. But then, as we actually eventually hit the recession, right in 2001. You look at some of those cyclical names and they got hit 30 to 40 percent um like some serious drawdowns and so i think again for me there's a lot of these types of names whether it's exxon or some material names that are still flirting with all-time highs i think that's a major risk because if all of this sort of tech carnage eventually translates. And again, you can also, it's both the tech tech layoffs. You, you hear every day more meta just laid off, I think 11,000. Amazon's laying off 10,000. Twitter just did its own employee purge. So these, the layoffs are coming um, from this sort of tech bubble, if you will, a growth bubble. Um, and similar to that 2001 period, eventually it, it's probably gonna translate into a recession. That's certainly my view. You also look at the housing sector that is, you know, you, you listen to some of the comments like DR Horton, CEO on, on their earnings call, Shocking expects further there. contraction in 23, um, expect uh, sales, I think, to be down 25 to 30% in Q1. If all of this is happening, again, you think of that hope framework and, that- And, and, and by the way, you, sorry, Mike, you mentioned Micron as well in terms of planning its facilities, but Micron's announcements as well were like, oh my God, the semi-sector is also now- up the wild yeah <laughs> you know so if you if you go down that checklist again you've had housing collapse again not saying it's a 2008 collapse but you've had housing a, a market slowdown you've had orders slow down you look at the ism new orders index right that has been in contraction for three out of the last four months yeah even um, though the headline is still just holding it feels as though in terms of projections from various things new orders and many other things it seems only a matter of time before that gets lower. Surely it has yep. to. And then you look at profits. You know, you've heard Target, Walmart, various retailers. You've heard the likes of Google or Al Alphabet. Um, they're talking about compressed uh, uh, profit margins. So now it's starting to hit profits. That hasn't been really reflected in earnings estimates, but it's starting to. Um, so the next leg in that framework is employment. And again, I go back to those sort of announcements and a lot of people say, yeah, but the, the employment market is so strong. Well, my counter to that is these layoffs tend to take time. I've, mm -hmm. I've worked at a large corporation before, and these plans don't happen immediately. Twitter, yes. Elon Musk came in and fired however many people right off the bat. They were gone that day. That can happen. But a lot of times in these sort of restructurings, they'll do a what they call a reduction in force. 
And that's a whole planning, right? They say, okay, what areas need trimming? What are, you know, the, the excess fat? The tech layoffs will start to hit, I think, the employment figures. Um, but and again, then I think... today, Mike, we still haven't, we've just had the initial jobless claims out again. The remaining yeah. around, was it 220,000, give or take? They've remained there now yep. for like five weeks, and that's having risen off the lows where it looked as though they were going up, they went back down, sub 200. Yep. And, and despite all of this, even the initial jobless claims have yet to, to to move properly, which is just the thing that I can't fathom. So we've got this, it feels as though there's this crisis coming, waiting to happen on Main Street, but we've perhaps priced in to a large extent the now the, the recession on Wall Street or the Wall Street recession as it sees it. I I think, I don't know if we've priced in the recession on Wall Street, because if you look at earnings estimates, they really haven't haven't declined too much. Um, and again, there's been a bifurcation in the market where tech and growth has been hammered um, and people have been hiding out in those cyclical areas. And I forget who it was I heard speaking the other day, and they said, you notice that in sort of the the relative performance, right? If you look at this year and what's been performing, it's been quality, rising rates. You want, you know, the safer companies, strong balance sheets, high cash yeah, flow. It's been McDonald's and so on, hasn't it this year? The old, yeah, you look at the quality names. Names, Yeah, That's been doing extremely well. But then on the other hand, you have sort of the cyclical areas. Banks have been holding up incredibly well, materials, things like that. And so it, it, the thing that I think people need to differentiate is it, have the rise in rates been growth driven or have they been inflation driven? Oh, surely because inflation if, driven, right? Surely. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, growth obviously has been slowing. So it's largely been, been inflation. And so I think what we saw, as you mentioned in the October print there was, yeah, inflation prints are going to continue softening. It's, it's the nature of base effects. You look at commodities, they've softened off their highs. Um, there's different components from wages and rent and, and, and home prices and healthcare. The reality is base effects, you're going to see a softening in prints. Now, whether that comes down to 6%, 5%, whatever it is, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not in the business of economic forecasting. Um, but, you know, I, I do think that as you start to see that rollover, or softening inflation prints, the bond market will get, get a little bit excited because the bond market's been hammered this year. And as I said, a lot of those indicators I use have been dead wrong. And even though my view has been wrong on bonds this year, I've luckily stayed out of trouble because of my more technical trading models for my timing. Um, but if that's starting to turn, then you know you could get a, a big bounce um, in bonds or a retreat in yields here. So um, and I think if that happens, again, it's sort of that flow chart of capital, if you will, where then the cyclicals could actually get hit, right? Because that the might yield, be the yield real fall, presumably right, the, the realization of cyclicals also brings some right. Yeah, the sort of realization that this hasn't been growth, this has been inflation. And if that's starting to turn and yields are coming down, then do you want cyclicals, especially like the banks? I mean, particularly, I'm so bearish on the banks, and it's been one of my most frustrating trades this year. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, for me, that's the framework I go into 2023 is employment has been firm. But I think that's the next shoe to drop. And, you know, as you mentioned, if you look at payrolls or you look at unemployment rate, if you keep an eye on the ISM new orders index, which, again, I think the latest print was like 49.5, but the last three out of four months have been negative or in contraction below 50. It's when you see a, like a real plunge in new orders, which, again, if the housing market has screeched to a halt, like people think, um, or the data shows that if you see that plunge in new orders, that tends to really be sort of that kicking kicking off point of when unemployment just skyrockets. And in, in terms of playing it, Mike, w would that be the point at which you would then be looking at bonds? And in, if you are, then are you looking at? I suppose it depends on the the inflation scenario, of course. So, if inflation appears to have peaked. So there appears to be negative momentum in inflation. We don't know where it's going to settle, but it could be no time. And it might not be. There's plenty of people who are suggesting it's 
<laughs> it's foolish, completely foolish to think it's anywhere near peaking. But if if that's the case and it's more of a disinflationary move that we have, um, so inflation down, growth obviously down, um, uh, but the, the Fed hasn't pivoted. As we see employment or initial jobless claims shooting up, presumably at some point, is that the point that we should focus on the long end? Because there isn't that inflation risk is it's working in the favor of uh, long bonds. Whereas if or when the Fed pivoted around that point and it came too soon, then it'd probably be the short end given the inflation risk of the Fed pivoting prematurely before we've seen a real... So, so to, to, is that how you see it? In my mind, it's, okay, bonds are just a no-go, it feels like. They're a no-go, as they haven't have been all year. They're a no-go until, at least, until you see the initial jobless claims beginning to really shoot up. And that could be the point they begin looking at 30s. Hey there, revolutionaries. To join a community sharing insights like you just watched, head over to realvision.com. There you will get unbiased insights and exclusive access to the very best, brightest, and biggest names in finance. Be a part of our community of lifelong learners. See you there.